Good evening. Welcome to the August 21st, 2013 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, ask if you would uh, make sure your phones are on mute or off or on uh, silent for the meeting. Um, would you uh, please stand and repeat after me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go ahead and have a seat. Applications heard uh, during tonight's meeting will be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission during the meeting tonight. The Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation on these applications will then be submitted to the St. Charles County Council for their final decision on the items. The, uh, the individual items or bills will be introduced at the Monday, September 9th, 2013 County Council meeting. See, we have a quorum. In fact, I think we have perfect attendance tonight. Way to go. I know. It's great. Um, will someone uh, open the... Uh, I will make a motion. There's a motion to open. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. The following documents are introduced as a matter of record for the public hearing and regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Unified Development Ordinances of St. Charles County, including zoning maps. The year 2020 Master Plan for St. Charles County, which includes the year 2020 Future Land Use Plan Map. Just to give you a little roadmap of uh, tonight's proceedings, we will, um, I will read each uh, application into the record. Um, staff will give the, them, uh, then give um, their analysis and, uh, and recommendation. Then uh, the commission will uh, have, if the commission may ask any questions of staff, then uh, the applicant, if they so choose, can come up forward and um, explain the application and answer any questions the commission may have. We then open up to the public, where anybody in the room who wishes to speak on that application uh, may do so. Um, if you do speak, please make sure you fill out um, one of the speaker cards that we have up here in the front and uh, make sure that um, Cindy has that so we can keep a record of, uh, of your notes. And um, after the public hearing, we will uh, bring it before the commission. We will discuss it um, openly in front of everybody, and then we will make our recommendation. Like I said, the um, recommendation will be voted on at the September 9th meeting of the county council. All right. Um, the first application this evening is application uh, 19. 475 by W.J. Zalman III, Zalman Law Firm, applicant slash representative, William Ramos Perez and Maria uh, Zermeno Ramos, owners. The application requests a conditional use permit for a lawn care service. The property is zoned A, Agricultural District. The property known as two, um, 2110 Hepperman Road is located on the southeast corner of Highway N and Hepperman, Hepperman Road property consists of 2.7 acres and is located within Council District 2. Staff? Thank you. Um, zonings in the area include A, agricultural zoning to the north, south, and east, um, and C2 zoning to the west. Um, land uses include vacant agricultural to the north and south, and then single-family residential to also to the south, east, and west. Um, as with all conditional use permits, Sorry, we evaluate this um, based on the criteria set up forth in the Unified Development Ordinance. And staff has reviewed, reviewed the criteria subject for the subject site and finds the location for the lawn care service appropriate at the intersection of Highway N and Hepperman Road. Um, in 2003, a conditional use permit um, number five, 589 was issued for nursery on Highway N um, across from the subject site. And then the northwest corner, as I said, is zone C2. So we have a history of, of allowing uses in the area. Some of them haven't developed, but they would st those uses would still be permitted um, in this area. Um, staff does recommend approval. Um, the, we would note that the um, operation, it must comply with the definition for a lawn care service. Um, and so they, they can't do like heavy landscaping and things. They, um, they must comply with that lawn care definition. Um, so our recommendation is, con is approval with the conditions of a site plan must be submitted to and approved by the St. Charles County Community Development Department, indicating the entrance, parking, and location of all structures. Um, no conditional use shall be, act be active until all conditions of the approval have been met. In any case where a conditional use is not in place and in active use within two years from the date of granting and or in accordance with the terms of the conditional use originally granted or subsequently amended, then without further action by the Planning and Zoning Commission and or County Council, the conditional use or authorization thereof shall be null and void. Any questions of staff? 
Uh, in the report, you said that the property had uh, violations had been cited. Um, the, the the violations were relative to operating the without, business on the, the site. Use permit. Right. That, that's the only. Any other questions to staff? And I think I, there were letters. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch, of letters. Bunch of letters. Yeah. I, I'm supposed to read those in the record. Yes. Forgive me. Okay. Um, letters. We have a letter from MoDOT and letters of support from Gary and Alice Ortner, Arlene Land, Tiffany Lowenstein, Dana Dorn, Michael and Judith Moorfield, John Barra, Paul Ellenbeck, and Jay Case, all in support. Thank you. All right. Um, is the applicant here, and do, do they wish to come forward? Would you uh, raise your right hand for us? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, to so help you, God? I do. Okay. Can you state your name and address for a record, please? My name is William Zalman. I'm an attorney with an office in Winsville at 511 West Pierce Boulevard. Uh, I'm here in support of this conditional to use application. Uh, my clients, Willen and Maria Ramos, and two of their children are here today, and I think one neighbor who's also in support of it. Uh, Mr. Ramos is an immigrant to this country from Guatemala. He's been here 19 years, and on May 31st, he was sworn in as a citizen, so he's very proud of that. And <laughs> His, his wife is currently in the process of trying to get hers, and the two kids there are their tutors. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he's been conducting uh, the lawn maintenance business there for quite some time, and I don't know who somebody complained anonymously, and that's why we're here uh, requesting the conditional use permit. Uh, he doesn't really live on Hepperman Road. He lives on a private road, which is the extension of Hepperman Road. It's not county maintained. In fact, he maintains it for all of his neighbors. And here's the originals of, of those that I emailed. Every one of his neighbors has, has submitted a application in support of this application. He's a good neighbor. Uh, he maintains his place. When he bought the place, he didn't know, but the septic system wasn't up to code, and he uh, got a friendly little letter from the county, and he's just recently completed getting that all up to code. So he's a good citizen, and uh, I'm asking you to please approve this application. I didn't bring flowers, but... <laughs> but... I would endeavor to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Go. Yes, sir. With the um, recommendations that the staff is making for this, this permit, okay, does Mr. Ramos feel that he's able to continue his operating his business as he has in the past? Certainly. Is he, is he good with those? Yeah. Uh, I think the only thing we need to do, according to the, the staff, and Ms. Whipple, please correct me if I'm wrong, is is to file a site plan showing all the all the various uses of the premises and how they'll be used. So he's good with it, and this doesn't present a Absolutely. hardship for him. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you for your service. All right. We will uh, now open this up to the room. So if there's anybody in the room that wishes to speak on this application, feel uh, please feel free to come forward. All right. Seeing none, we will uh, close the public hearing. Any uh, questions, comments, discussion? I would make a motion. All right. Mr. Griffin has made a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. Mr. Ellis, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Mm -hmm. Yes to flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Keckner? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Ms. Polly? Yes. Mr. Settley? Yes. Mr. Cronin? Yes. And I as well vote yes. All right. The motion is approved 10 to 0. All right.
The next item on the agenda is application 19736, the preliminary plat for stage right manor by Musler Engineering Company, applicant slash engineer, 2705 St. Peter's Howell Trust, owner slash developer. The zoning is R1E slash FF, <coughs> single family residential district, 7,000 square feet minimum lot size, with floodway fringe overlay district, per application number 19247. The property consists of four lots located on the east corner of St. Peter's Howell Road and Park Charles Boulevard South. Steph? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, She's thinking about flowers over there. there are, I don't know where I was. Um, there are four, um, these are four lots as you stated. Um, staff has reviewed it. Um, the plat does meet with the ordinance requirements. Um, the approval tonight will be subject to the rezoning being finalized. It is at the County Council. We heard it, I guess, last month. It's at the County Council right now, um, and that is moving forward without problem. Um, so we went ahead and reviewed the plat, and we will not sign it until after we get um, the ordinance signed for the rezoning. Um, there were um, four letters. Uh, Missouri, one from Missouri American Water, Ducka Creek Sanitary District. There's also a Ducka Creek Service letter. And um, then Musler Engineering um, submitted a letter about the Park Charles Covenants and Restrictions. Um, on this, at this site, the, um, the, the property isn't subject to the Covenants and Restrictions of Park Charles um, as it is. They they went through and, and found that it's not technically subject to that. Um, but, but they are going to, um, to pay into the subdivision um, as, and so the lots will, will pay into the subdivision trustees and, and things. So um, it, it appears that they're all coming to an agreement on that. Um, so staff is recommending approval. Any questions to staff? I struggle with this a little bit on the conditional use permit and being that this isn't a flood fringe overlay district and I'm looking at the map and it shows the and I asked I guess uh, the representative from Musler engineering at the staff meeting um, if that area behind us between the creek and these lots was a, there's a daycare center if that had ever flooded or had the intersection of Park Charles and St. Peter's Howell Road flooded because by looking at this map the 100 year high water flood insurance rate map that line is actually um, a few feet higher than the basement floor of these houses if I'm interpreting this map right so my concerns is is if they're building new houses there I surely don't want those houses to flood and 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 I've, ne I've never I did not receive an answer from the engineering staff at the conditional use permit somewhere I'd like to know that because apparently that hundred year high water mark is is off is in the backyards of these houses and these basements are quite a few feet below that so well, how, how do you address that yeah so, well the a couple things from play here um, the the map that is up on the board now that is um, the current flood insurance rate map um, that Flood in that flood level base flood elevation, sorry, is 472 feet. Um, the the new maps we have the new preliminary firm maps um, that we also use, and and those maps take took more detailed elevations all over the county as they develop these maps. And what that shows is that shows that the daycare building itself is out of the hundred or the base flood. 100-year um, flood elevation, whatever way you want to call it, and it's in the 500-year flood. So, um, and the, and also, it's kind of interesting because the flood elevations have increased, but the area that's actually within the floodplain is less because of the topography, because they have studied the topography closer as they made the D firms. Now, what what we, they, um, they can go through a process with. FEMA, a letter of map revision, in order to pull the lots out of the floodplain. When those lots are pulled out of the floodplain, they can put a basement, and that basement can actually go below the base flood elevation, but the idea is that the floodwaters don't get to it um, because, because the dirt around the house is above the 100-year flood level, 
and so the flood waters only come up still to that level and you still have um, two or three feet until you get to where the um, ground level is around the home um, so so the we allow the basements I mean it, the FEMA law allows the basements to be technically below the base flood elevation but the water really can't get there because of the surrounding grade around the property but these lots are 120 foot deep mm -hmm. and if I'm reading this right even with the revised map those basement floors are going to be four foot below the 100 year flood plane right okay. So, right, but I the mean, grade around the house is going to be a, well above that 100 year okay. flood level. The street in front of that, I mean, do you have, I guess, is, is, is the day, to your knowledge, is the daycare ever flooded it's between the creek and this, these lots? Do you know? Uh, not, yeah, not that I'm aware of. I don't recall doing a permit. And I'm not um, familiar with that area, but is Park Charles and St. Peter's Hall Road, that intersection, ever flooded? Anyone lives down that area? I've okay. never seen that. I've never yeah. seen I it. live nearby there. Okay. Yeah. I just I mean just understand my concerns with seeing these 100 year right, flood plain we, yeah, we um having a third of our county in the flood um floodplain yeah we we uh take a really close look at this but yeah it, it meets all of our county regulations for the floodplain and you're comfortable with mm -hmm. it okay yeah. thank you very much sure. any other uh, questions to staff yeah Ms. Polly. Yeah, a couple of questions sure for you. Hi. <laughs> Stand up, Jen. Stand up. Okay. Uh, getting back to the covenants. Uh -huh. um, has there been any conversation about, I, I realize this is just four lots, but I guess I have some concern that there aren't, they're not, the covenants aren't applicable to these four lots, or I understand. But has there been any conversation about, is there a way to adopt the covenants yeah, they, of Park Charles? Yeah, they, when, when we record the, um, the final plat, they, um, there's usually a spot on the plat where we say that the, the owner signs off that the plat is subject to the con, um, covenants restrictions and then where those are recorded. Um, and, and so that, that's the, um, the builder is working with the homeowners association because there's some stuff in, in the covenants that's kind of um, not applicable to, mm -hmm. to this case. Um, and um, and and so they're they're working that out um, from from our standpoint these four lot owners the basic thing we're looking for is these four lot owners are going to be paying the yearly assessments so they're going mm -hmm. to be paying to help maintain um, you know common ground in the area and and things of that nature so that's that's where where we're most concerned the county only really gets concerned with um, that that um, common ground is maintained by the lot owners of within the subdivision so these people who who will you know have access to that common ground they will also be paying for part of it so that's and but but technically technically this uh, this was not part of any of the covenants and restrictions for park trials so they're they're doing this um you know as a way they're they're meeting with the property or the um like the gentleman that were here last month about those restrictions and things. I understand. The reason I'm asking, obviously, it's at one of the entrances, maybe not a heavily traveled entrance. I mean, this is a very large development. I mean, mm -hmm. it clearly looks like it's a, a part of it. Right. I, yeah. But I, under, I understand all of that. So, so, but what I'm getting is that they, there's something being worked out right now. And right. their intent is to adopt something close to it, maybe not exactly. Well, but. or no, they'll adopt those restrictions, but there might be some things within those they're restrictions that they're exempted out of based on what they work out with the, um, the officers of the Board of Trustees for the subdivision. Understand. Okay, so they're, yeah. they're going to uh, take the revised covenants and restrictions and attach the developer has attached that to the land. Right. Yeah. Right. As opposed mm -hmm. to just the homeowners voluntarily paying uh, paying fees. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. okay. And Jim, one other question, just mm -hmm. out of curiosity, which lots are 116, 17, 18, and 19? Is that the club or what used to be the clubhouse or? There, there was in Musler's letter, he made reference that track D oh. and lots 116, 17, 18, and 19. And I don't know if, if that's what track that was or what plat that yeah, was. In I, I yeah, I was just curious if that was the clubhouse there, what used to be the clubhouse, yeah, or if it probably, was some other area. Of the probably so. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I'll okay. pick the iron off. All right, great. <laughs> we'll wait for you to. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> any uh, any other questions of staff? All right. The applicant care to step forward. You raise your right hand for us. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, to help you, God? I do. Okay. Can you state your name, name and address for the record? Okay. My name is Jeffrey R. Smith. I'm an engineer with Muscler Engineering. We have an office at 32 Port West Court in St. Charles, Missouri. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here representing St. Peter's Hall Trust regarding um, the preliminary plat for stage right manor. And you'll remember that while I was here last month on the rezoning, at that time it was called St. Peter's Hall Trust. And that was it. We did not have a name for it yet. Um, they have decided on the name of stage right manner, which uh, one of the you know, trustees is into the theater. So apparently, that's where the name came from. <laughs> um, as you know, the site's located at 2701 St. Peter's Hall Road. Um, it's on the southeast corner of St. Peter's Hall Road and Park Charles South Boulevard. We're proposing four lots to be fronting Park Charles. The total area of the lots itself is 0.78 acres, and um, Lot one, which is the corner lot, will be 8,800 square feet. The other three lots will each be 8,400 square feet. Uh, this all meets the R1E zoning that is hopefully being approved next Monday? Yes. Next Monday by County Council. Um, these lots, as was brought up, um, are above the current 100-year floodplain. Uh, the depiction you see on there, the one line that's going way up on... Um, on the Park Charles and St. Peter's Howell is actually how the line is depicted on the flood map itself. There's a second line, as you see, that's running down around the building. Um, I can come, up, if I come around here. It's this line coming down. Mm -hmm. It comes down and around. Now, that is based on the elevations currently approved, but that's based on the topo of the land. When they first did the maps themselves, a lot of times what they used was a USGS map. They did not go out and do a field survey, so they did their best guess on USGS maps, which were running about 20-foot contour intervals, on where that line was. As we got a little more involved with it, we can start topo in the areas. We can find where that, where that elevation really is. So these houses right now, the building pads will be sitting outside of the flood floodplain. Uh, there is a new flood map that is currently, it's all preliminary, it will sometime in the future be adopted. Uh, that flood map did show that the flood waters in this area did raise. Uh, um, I question that raising because I live out in this area. I've never seen the water reach that intersection. In fact, since they've improved St. Peter's Hall Road, I've noticed the water seems to be lower on some of these heavy rains when we've had the hurricanes. I'm, I live in uh, Hickory Ridge, just to the north of that. I'm currently their president of that homeowners association, so I am familiar with Park Charles. Um, we have met with staff on how to proceed with the new flood elevations, even though they are not in effect, and make sure that these houses will not be affected by them. And uh, we currently have a LOMA, which is a letter of map amendment, into uh, FEMA right now regarding the existing conditions. They can only approve a letter of map amendment due to the existing conditions right now. Uh, we have done some, we will do some minor grading on this site that will make sure that those elevations are above the new, uh, the new uh, elevate, flood elevations that they are depicting. Uh, as far as covenants and restrictions go, we have got, we've been supplied with from Park Charles South of the covenants and restrictions that were submitted with and filed on, with Plat 1 of Park Charles South. Now those covenants restrictions stated that additional ground could be brought into Park Charles South in the future, but at that point it was just Plat 1. Our property was part of Plat 3 with Park Charles. I do not know the date of what, when that came on in. But at that time, our track of land and a lot of the properties to the south were all known as Track D. And for some reason, with that record plat and the CNR stated that Track D was excluded 
along with four other lots. And you mentioned the numbers. I did not know the numbers because I knew they were far away. Uh, yeah, 116, 119. I've got a small record plot here. And we are, we're down here on this map. They appear to be these four lots up here. Up by the school? I don't know if that's a school or a church. Our church well, yeah, it, that's probably, is that the Baptist church it, it's, up there? It's all the way up here, to top, and I don't know, I have no idea why those were excluded. Okay. Um, I have no idea why <coughs> Track B was excluded. Uh, we have, um, with, when we file our record plat, we're going to file a document that states that lots one through four will be subject to the provisions of the Park Charles. They will pay in for the common ground and so forth. Okay. And that will be the the homeowners, when they purchase the property, they will then become subject to Park Charles. Great. Thank you. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions we may have. What do you, what do you, say, what do you believe is the elevation for the 100-year floodplain at the most revised map? The most revised map, uh, if you go to the far end of our property, the far eastern end, just off the property, they have raised about where you see the 472 on my plan. They have said that's 473. It may be just a little further upstream of where that 472 is at the moment. Uh, where you see the 470 on my map, they have moved that line and they have said that running along parallel to St. Peter's Howl Road is going to be 472 now. Mm -hmm. And then when you cross the road, they immediately drop to 470, 469 very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, so what they're saying is that the water's going to go up and over the road at 472. Uh, from experience of living out there, we've not seen that. I don't know why they're saying that. My only guess is that they have a box culvert missized. Okay. Uh, just to be clear, though, the basement elevations in some of these houses are 467, yeah. 468, etc. Yeah. The basement floors themselves will be below the 100 year. But the water itself won't be getting up to where they could get into that basement. They will, it'll be running along, the new line will be running along the edge of St. Peter's Howe Road and the, on the right of way line. And then it'll come on down through the parking lot. It will loop around the building. The building is around 470, the existing building out there is around 473, two or so. And you're not aware of any water getting in that existing I've building? I've not seen any. In fact, like I said, after they rebuilt St. Peter's Hall Road and I saw them put the box culverts in, it's gotten better. That's probably more important to me, the existing building, than maps, because people make maps and people make mistakes. So. Yes. Thank you for your answer. Sure. Yes, sir. Just out of curiosity, as a, we had a very lengthy meeting last month on this mm -hmm. with the uh, Board of Trustees, and they, one of their concerns was... Uh, Four houses matching four houses across the street, and here is four and three. Did they, are they no problem with that? As far as I know, they no longer have a problem with that. That was a big deal it last was, time. I think it was just a shock upon seeing it, and then as yeah. you can as you compare your way through the subdivision, these houses, right. lots, some of the lots are it larger match what's up, yeah. in the interior. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. We will now open this up to the public, so if there's anybody in the room that wishes to speak on this application, feel free. Seeing none, we will close the public and bring it before the commission. Any? I move we approve application 1976. Oh, second it. Oh. 19736. All right. Mr. Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Mrs. Keckner? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Ms. Polly? Yes. Mr. Settley? Yes. Mr. Cronin? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. The plat is approved 10 to 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. All See right. See you next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, uh, the next application is 19831 for the preliminary plat of Redfern Manor, plat 2, landmark surveying company, applicant slash engineer, Sterling Redfern, owner slash applicant. Property is zoned RR, single family residential district, three acres minimum lot size per application 18895. The property consists of seven lots located on the east side of Redfern Lane, approximately 700 feet east of Redfern Court, and on the west side of Highway F, approximately 1400 feet south 
of Buckstone Pass. Staff? Okay, um, staff has um, reviewed the plat. It does meet the um, county requirements. We are recommending approval. Um, we do have two letters, one from MoDOT and then also in close list the ordinance for the rezoning to the RR zoning for you. So staff is recommending approval. Any questions of staff? Yes, Mr. Cronin. Uh, Jan, there's going to be a very similar development that this proposed in my district uh, in the near future that I'm aware of. And I have no issues with this one or the one coming up, but I want to know, is, this is a little bit of a precedent in that you're, we're going, but for a while there was a talk about being five acre lots in the rural parts of the county, and this is a rezoning to three, and I am fine with that, but are you, is the staff generally supportive of these type of rezonings for three acre lot development, small three acre lot developments in rural areas of the county where five is specified by the UDO? Um, okay, we're, it's in some areas five is um, specified by the UDO, however, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull up the land use map, sorry. Um, at the, at this location, um, it, if memory serves, I think it was shown in the master plan to be a three acre area because we have some three acre areas. So we'll let, let's just take a quick peek. I was just looking at the okay. rezoning application. Yeah. It says uh, A, agriculture is from five acre minimum lot size to RR, single family residential, three acre minimum lot size. Yeah, it is, it, but this one is shown to be in the rural residential area on the master plan. So the light up there, it's a lighter green. Mm -hmm. um, the property, it, you come off of Highway D to get to it and come around to um, Highway, it also fronts on Highway F. So it's in this rural residential area, which in the master plan is shown as a three acre area. Um, the one, the one coming up, um, I, yeah, I think it's going to be on the public hearing in September. Um, the, but that one's different because it's in a low density residential area and also in the urban service area, where this is not in the urban service area. So that's why this one we um, definitely recommended approval of the three acre lots um, and the septic system because it meets with the three acre rural residential density from the master plan. So you're saying that this is three acre in the master plan, but zone five acre now? Is that yeah, it was zoned five acre until they rezoned it. Right. Right. Okay. Any other questions of staff? All right. Is the applicant here and that they wish to come forward? Can you raise your right hand for us? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? I do. Can you state your name and address for the record? Uh, Dale Walterman. I'm the owner of the Landmark Surveying Company at 802 East Main Street in Winsville. All right. Go ahead. Uh, well, it's pretty straightforward. Mr. Redfern, this is the last piece of ground he owns, and it's the, the end of the property. You go through Redfern Manor Plat 1 to get to this. And, you know, six years ago, we came up with a concept plan for these seven lots in the uh, – Great Recession, it sat there and nothing happened. So, but now he's there's been some interest shown, so he wants to move ahead. And we, during that six years, the property went from the three acres owning to the five acres owning, and we put it back to the three acres owning. So, uh, we're just going to move forward with it. And, uh, you know, he's willing to comply with the recommendations. You know, there's most of the, the recommendations from the staff report have to do with the set of improvement plans, which we will have to prepare before, you know, we, we can record the plan. Any questions? questions? Joe? No, I'm no. good with it. I, I'd like to see more of these developments <laughs> yep, in the county like this. That's, it's become, I, I don't know. I, Jan can, I, I don't know, the last five or six years, we probably haven't seen five or six of them. I don't know. They just kind of disappeared. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll open up to the public. Seeing as there's no one else in the room, I'm going to go ahead and back roll over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Camouflage back and forth. I will uh, close the public hearing and bring before the commission. Any discussion? Make a motion. All right. Is the motion? Second. All right, Ms. Polly, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Settley? 
Yes. Mr. Cronin? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Prom? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Keckner? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. All right. Platus approved 10 to 10 to 0. All right. How you been? The uh, only other business is the approval of the uh, the minutes from last month. It was emailed out. Any additions, changes, deletions? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve as they has read. Moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Is there any other uh, any other business before the commission? Do we not have members leaving? Mm -hmm. Members leaving? We have a member next oh, meeting. Oh, yeah. Lady <laughs> and yep. Yes, this we do. Is, this is my last meeting. This is Mrs. Keckner's last meeting. How many years have we won? We will miss you. We will miss you as well. <laughs> it's been good. I, I am sorry to leave, but uh, it's time to let someone else have his seat. <laughs> Can't hog all the fun yourself, huh? Right. And when it comes up, I'll apply again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Chance still on the party list, though, so we're good. Yeah, as long as I stay on the party list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A happy birthday Thank to Miss Whipple. 27, right? I, I still like 25. 25? 25? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no other uh, business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? We'll talk to you. Aye. Aye. I'll talk to you for a moment.